Hi guys, it's uh, Sam for Digital Me, and uh, today we're going to be looking at um, the updates to the Meta Ball in Cinema 4D R17. So, let's bring it up. If we go up here and select our Meta Ball, we've got our Meta Ball generator in the scene. I'm just going to create a sphere and then Control C, Control V, just copy it a few times. I'm just going to drag them out. One can go there, and we'll put another one up here. And if I select all three of these spheres and drag them into the metal ball, uh, you can see that um, we've got pretty much the same, well, exactly the same behavior as we would have had in uh, Cinema 4D R15 or 16, uh, maybe before that. Um, so if we go to our metal ball, we've got our whole value so we'll come to that in a minute edit a subdivision right I'm just gonna knock that down so it's a, it looks a little bit better now if you've never used the meta ball before this is pretty much what it does it it grabs objects and mainly spheres and and uh, has them kind of group together when they get within a certain radius and you can move move it through and it updates the mesh okay so let's have a look at the settings for the meta ball then the whole value is how close it has to be before it starts glooping together so I've changed the whole value you can see that here there's a lot more glooping going on but if I put it back up to a hundred percent it has to be kind of nearer to get that effect um, the editor subdivision the lower that is the higher the mesh is so and that's just in the editor that is so in our viewport here you can see the the mesh is a lot heavier uh, that may not be what you want if you've got a lot of objects um, so you can actually make things run better in the editor I'm gonna put this up to say 25 maybe 20 so that's what it looks like in the editor the one underneath, a render subdivision, is what the mesh will appear like in the render. So if I go back to the editor subdivision and put this down to 5, that's the kind of mesh you're going to get when you render if this is set to 5 centimeters. So this is what we see in the editor, and this is what we'll see in the um, final render. So that's all pretty much like the old versions of um, the meta ball we've got this tab now though which is accurate normal so if I take one of these spheres and get it to gloop and render this you're gonna see that around here we've got some um, well they're not even artifacts it's because of the way way the um, the, the mesh is the hull is we're getting these uh, sort of lines but there's a tick box now called accurate normals so I tick that on and then render you can see that most of that has been eliminated which is great also I, I should note that we're not actually seeing this uh, render subdivision when we render like this in the viewport if we render to the picture viewer you can see that this is a lot more smoothed out whereas this is still a bit blocky so when you render in the viewport you are going to see the editor subdivision you only you're only going to see the render subdivision when you render to picture viewer so that's something to take note of um, okay so if I select all three of my spheres and then right click cinema 4d tags go down to meta ball we've got the meta ball tags which we we did have on in the old older versions of Cinema 4D, but there's a few differences now. So, if I select uh, this sphere here, okay, and then go to its tag, we've still got strength, which is basically the whole value in the meta ball. But whereas, if you start messing with the whole value. In the uh, in the actual meta ball generator, you'll be affecting the whole system. 
Whereas if you put a tag on an object, you're affecting the strength for just that object. So we could have a strength of 80% for this one. We could have a strength of 123 for that one. And then a different strength for that one. So each one of these would have a different hole value now. So you get a lot more control over what's uh, happening with these tags. Um, radius. Now, you can see that I'm moving that up and down and not a lot is happening. Now that's to do with this new feature. Um, you can see a drop down here, we've got Sphere. So that's uh, how the older versions of Metaball normally deal with things. It's on that setting. But now we have two other options, Line, Triangle. So to demonstrate this a little bit better, I'm going to create a box. Just whack that there, put that in the meta ball. Now that's the kind of behavior that you'd have expected to see in older versions of cinema. Now the reason that it's actually, uh, it looks like there's a blob at each corner of this box is because our cube hasn't got enough subdivision. So if I say subdivided by four, by four, by four, this is the kind of result and behavior that you'd have totally expected to see in older versions of Cinema 4D. Our cube has become sort of like this in um, nondescript blob, if you like. But if we right click on the cube, go to Cinema 4D tags and add a metable tag to that, and then look inside this um, tag, we can actually set this to triangle. And what this basically does is allows you to bring in any any object, any geometry into the meta ball, and it still retain its shape and still react with everything else. That's lovely. So let's just get it to intersect there. And have a look at it in the picture viewer. Ooh, there we go. It's not too bad. Um, this accurate normals checkbox, if I turn that off, you can see that there's a lot of, uh, well, it looks like mesh errors, but it's not. It's just the way the maths works it out, really. Um, but you can see the difference between these two. Um, so that accurate normal tab in the meta ball is um, absolutely brilliant. So if we go back our, uh, to our tag for our cube, there's also another... Oh, I'm moving the whole meta ball there. Just select my cube. So if we go back to the cube, go back to the tag for our cube, there's another option here, which is line. If we select that, something very weird's going on. And this is where this radius um, attribute comes into play. So basically what it's doing is, let's just turn off the meta ball. I've got four subdivisions. It's looking at these lines and the radius is saying is almost the whole value for around those edges. So if we turn the meta ball back on and slide the radius up, you can see that it's getting better. Uh, you know, it's filling in the holes kind of thing. Now, if I... Uh, let's make this cube bigger, actually, so we get a nicer result. Well, that's nice. So we've made that cube bigger. Go back to the tag. We can choose the radius of which the meta ball affects those edges. And we can whack it up and get an, uh, quite a nice result there. This is the strength. I don't need to mess around with that really. But you get an idea of what that does. And because I've left my cube as a primitive, I can actually change the amount of segments in it and it will affect what that line mode in the meta ball is doing. So if I turn this down to two, that's nice. And uh, if we render, we are getting this render subdivision here. In fact, I might just turn this down a little bit so it looks a little bit better in our viewport. Accurate normals is on as well. play with this radius a little bit okay so we turn that radius up and you can see because of the strength this edge of the cube looks like it's veering towards the 
uh, the blob in front of it and this will all work in the meta ball now so this will actually merge with the rest of it and this is definitely something that you couldn't do in the meta ball before you can even uh, change the size and all that kind of thing because I left it as a primitive but so you can animate through this and it will look absolutely brilliant wonder if we can turn the render subdivision down to maybe 2.5 and see what kind of result we get if we get a little bit of a cleaner result maybe um, okay let's have a look at that yeah that's a lot cleaner that's a lot nicer so I think that's a, that about wraps it up really um, so yeah that's the meta ball for Cinema 4D R17 cheers guys bye <laughs>